Hi, Kerry here with Best of Us Investors. If you've been to my channel before, you know I'm a long-term investor and I'm also very high on biotech. The 50% of my portfolio, though, is in big tech, and that's Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, and Tesla. But the other 50%, I am more aggressive. I, I want to find the events that are going to change the way I live and then invest in the companies that are going to facilitate that change. And I believe that the most important event that happened in my life was the coronavirus, and it is spurred on the uh, the growth of companies, biotech companies, that are going to introduce us to genome editing. Part of genome editing, though, has to be p genome sequencing. So back in November, I bought a company by the name of Illumina, who at that time controlled 92% of the genome sequencing in the United States, uh, or excuse me, in the world. And so I've done well on it. I'm up about 50% on it um, in, I guess, less than a year, which is a good run. Uh, it, I was up about almost 100%, but it pulled back a bit. And I want to explore that. In fact, Brian, uh, one of my tribe members, we have meetings, Zoom meetings, on a regular basis. And uh, he told me that he was going to send me an email with two questions. And one of those questions is, what is the situation with, guilt, with Illumina and its uh, acquisition of guilt and bringing it into its system and the, the political and governmental issues that it's facing. So I thought this was important because I think it's important. I, I make a commitment that I'm in a stock, and then I, I've been pointed out that I don't come back to it and revisit it. So I want to today revisit Illumina and their current situation and my situation with it. And then I want to, I'm going to take you to a graph and show you where I think it's going. But first, I think we need to uh, tell you that I'm not your financial advisor. I'm here for entertainment and, um, and, and education. But if you want to help me out, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up. Um, the, the algorithm likes to see that. And then leave a comment in, in the uh, comment section, one way or the other. Again, uh, it helps the channel, and uh, it's a way for you to give back. I'll be right back. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, so you know I'm not your financial advisor. Um, Brian sent me a link to an interview with the CEO, uh, Francis de Sosa of, um, of Illumina. And, and I, as I watched the video, I thought, boy, Francis does a much better job of explaining what Illumina does and what the relationship with guilt is and what the merger or the acquisition of guilt uh, will mean to the company. So I need to share that with, uh, with the viewers. So here, here is a CNBC interview with Francis de Sosa, the um, CEO of guilt. Yeah, so let's start with, uh, you know, what will we do and what Grail does. We at Illumina provide the machines uh, that allow people to do genomic sequencing. So you put in blood or saliva samples, we tell you what DNA is in there. Our products are used, uh, for example, to fight the pandemic. So a lot of the news you see about new variants emerging, uh, well, the sequencing of that virus is, a lot of it is done on our machines. We're also used in cancer hospitals. We're used to diagnose, uh, to match cancer patients with therapies or diagnose kids with genetic diseases. So we're a leader in providing genomic sequencing solutions. We invented the technology that Grail uses, you know, uh, way back in our labs when we first started to see genomic biomarkers in blood <laughs> for cancer. And we knew that for cancer. And we knew that could be a really big discovery in terms of helping improve the survivability. And so back in 2016, we spun the technology out to raise the $2 billion it, it took, almost $2 billion, to do the very large clinical studies to develop that test. Now, that test came out onto the market uh, earlier uh, in June, and it's a, it's a blood test, a simple blood draw that looks for 50 cancers uh, across all stages in your blood. That's a really big step forward in the fight against cancer. Sure. 10 million people a year die of cancer, and we know that if you catch cancers early, your odds of surviving are much higher than if you catch it later. And so we're at the stage now 
we want to scale access to this test, make it broadly available, help get reimbursement for the test, mm -hmm. and, and, and make it available to people. So that's the relationship between uh, Illumina and Gilt. The next issue is why are they holding up this this merger, which was scheduled to happen in uh, early December, and why are they pursuing it further in the United in in uh, Europe to get approval over there? They aren't doing any business over there, but he's going to explain to you now why that's important. So we're currently working uh, through uh, the regulatory review process. There is a review we're working on with the European Commission. There really isn't any obstacle to us closing the deal in the U.S. We are working with an administrative review in the FTC, but there isn't really an obstacle uh, to us closing here in the U.S. right now. So it really is the process we're going through with the European Commission. And so where we are with that process is, you know, we expect a decision from the uh, European review process to come in. Initially, it was expected to come in at the end of this year. It now looks like it'll come in in Q1 of next year. And there are two processes underway. One is a regulatory review process, a phase two process, where the decision comes in in Q1. But we're also challenging in the European courts uh, the jurisdiction of the European, European Commission to look at this deal. You know, Grail has no business uh, in Europe at all and no plans to get into Europe in the next few years. And so we're challenging the jurisdiction sure. of the European Commission to look at these deals. Both of those decisions are expected to come in in Q1, but the deal expires on December 20th. And so what we did here was we closed the acquisition and we're holding it separate until we get those decisions mm. Uh, from the European Commission in Q1. Now he's going to get into the financial end of it as to why it's so important to have the approval of the European government as well as the American government so that they can then lobby the insurance companies to make this test available through insurance companies and through in reimbursement by the insurance companies. This is very key to the success of, the, of their company as well as to the su success of this procedure. Yeah, so today the Grail test is available, I said, and it costs about $1,000 for the blood test. And so there is a part of the population that can take advantage of that test, but a lot of the population just can't take advantage of a test that costs $1,000 each time. And so what we want to do is, is really help Grail by distributing it more broadly and working on getting reimbursement. We at Illumina have a terrific team that's been working on getting reimbursement for genomic tests for over eight years now. And the work our team has done around the world has gotten reimbursement for over 1 billion people for a variety of genomic tests. And so what we want to do is distribute the test more broadly, uh, so make it available uh, around the U.S., but also we have products at Illumina in over 140 countries around the world. And so we can make the test available more broadly. We can scale it up more quickly because we have uh, production labs around the world, and we can also work on getting reimbursement. Now, to do all of those things, we couldn't just license the technology. We need uh, Grail to take advantage of all the different parts at Illumina. And so when we looked at the path forward, what we wanted to do was make sure that this deal had a day in court, that it was reviewed and we got to a decision, and that the decision wasn't made by just the deal timing out on December 20th. Given how many lives could be saved if we bought Grail, we estimate that if we accelerated reimbursement in the U.S. by just one year, over 10,000 American lives could be saved. And so given the stakes here, we felt a moral obligation to do what we could to make sure this deal got heard and that we got to a decision. And the way we did that then is acquired Grail and held it separate so we can still get the decision in Q1 and then be able to move forward. Okay, so that kind of gives you an overview of what's happening at Illumina and how they relate to Grail and how it's important that Grail gets approved on both the United States, which it is, and in Europe, and how it then ties into the success of Illumina in that the procedures, the tests, will all be reimbursed by insurance companies. We got to recognize that it, the, the general public isn't going to step up on, on a regular basis and say, yeah, I'll have that test this month and then next month and then three months from now, and each time it costs me $1,000. But if, on the other hand, they meet the protocols that are established by insurance companies to have the test done and th thus be reimbursed, 
this is going to propel this company dramatically. So now what I'd like to do is take you to my charts and show you where I bought it, what's happened since I bought it, I bought it back in November, and where I think it's going from there. So let's look at my charts. This is my chart on Illumina, and I wanted to highlight, first of all, where I bought it. And this was back in uh, early November. I bought it at 30906. And as you can see, it, it spiked up uh, to get all the way up to about uh, $556. And then came down, and we went through the uh, March through, uh, I guess you would say, May doldrums as everything moved back to uh, the more industrial stocks and away from tech stocks. And then we had a good climb, and it came back up to uh, 524 and then it dropped, and it dropped um, just recently as a result of the questioning as to how they were going to pull off this uh, merger or acquisition of Grail. And we know now that um, they actually created Grail, spun it off for corporate and financial reasons. Uh, I think it was to raise money, and now they're trying to bring it back in. And the resistance is not coming, as I said earlier, from the United States government, but instead from European government, where they don't do any business. But what uh, Francis shared with us is they're doing this in an effort to make sure that when these cancer tests that Grail have somewhat mastered become available, they are in fact uh, have already set up for them to be reimbursable. And he's saying that should happen sometime in um, in early 2022. So if I had to project where this stock is going, um, and let's say we go to March of 2022, I think we're on a scale or, or on a, a a ride up something like this to where um, we're up. I'm up somewhere in the neighborhood of 95 percent, almost a. Uh, 100%. So I bought it at 309. And up here, I'm saying it's at 500 and something. I can't see it because of somewhere about five, almost 600. So that's where I think it's going. And I think it's going there because um, this is not going to just be a genome sequencing company, but it is going to be the genome sequencing company that gives you the ability to identify a, a myriad of cancers that could be in your body. And as Francis shared with us, um, that would save just, if, if they get it done uh, on January the 1st of 2022, they project it would sa save 10,000 lives in 2022 um, as a result of this test coming together with, uh, with guilt and Illumina. Okay, that's my take on Illumina. That's why I'm going to continue to hold Illumina, and that's why I think I'm going to get a, my double. And, and again, I'm doubling from where I bought it back in November of 2020. Uh, I think I'll get it sometime March, April, May of uh, 2022. So that's how I invest. And I think it's important then, and, and, I, and I, I say this uh, regularly on, on my, uh, my live streams, you've got to commit, if you're going to be in the business of investing, to be the smartest guy in the room. You've got to dig and find what's going on with the companies I own and what, what is the prospect in the future relative to the changes in the world that we live in. And I want to go back and emphasize that the biggest change that's happened in my 76 years of life uh, is the coronavirus. It has pointed out that two systems are broken, our healthcare system and our supply chain. And we need to spend money to make sure that both of them are corrected. This is going to help us in diagnosing cancer, diagnosing other genetic diseases, and then finding cures. And that's where I want my money invested. We have a wonderful opportunity uh, for investors at this time. Do I think there's going to be a crash? I don't have a clue. Uh, I think that the, one of the 
propellers of the, the growth of our economy is the printing of cash. And what I'm seeing is the Biden administration is trying to get more cash printed, which is going to end up somewhere. And some of that somewhere is where I'm invested. So that's how I approach investing. That's why I'm going to stay with Illumina. I hope you found this inform informative. I hope it opened your eyes to why, how you might be investing in the future and what might be the best steps for you. I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm the host of Best of Us Investors. Uh, we'd welcome you to our tribe um, if you so are inclined.